This video is going to be about using the macOS operating system interface to open the terminal application. The terminal application could be opened through your applications folder if you want to search for it there, or you can go to the top right of your screen to click on the magnifying glass icon and that'll open the spotlight. I am, I prefer extremely way more to use my keyboard to open things. So I use this combination of command space, uh, space being space bar, command space bar to open up spotlight. And then from there, I could type thing that I'm looking for. And then from there, uh, open up the thing, the, the application that I want to open up. So instead of using my mouse to click through everything, I am now going to use my keyboard. So let me demonstrate for you. I will be using this command space uh, combination on my keyboard and it opens up the spotlight search and that's where I can type in terminal and it'll open up the terminal application. Now the font might be a little small uh, for some, you know, depending on your screen resolution size and you know what you set for your resolution. So if you press command again and then while holding command you press the plus sign next to backspace it will keep increasing the font and now you have a really large font um, and a large window so some of the things that you could do here is maybe type in today's uh, to, to retrieve today's date for instance you could do that uh, type in date you could type in who am I It'll give you your current username's login um, name. You can also do things like um, checking the Java version. And I always forget if it's um, one or two dash. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Um, other programs, for instance, I might have Python and I want to check version and it'll be dash dash instead of dash. Now, that's something where uh, there's no standardization. If you have open source software, for the most part, GNU and other open source software folks will tend to adhere to the dash dash version style of flags. Whereas Java being that it was developed by Oracle for some time, Oracle had their own rules for various things. So, you know, this is why programs aren't always the exact same uh, thing. The other thing I wanted to show here is say for instance you want to learn how to use um, Java on the command line but you're more interested in compiling instead of running Java programs. So what you could do is type in man for manual and Java C This would open the manual page that was packaged with the Java C Java compiler. Here you, you'll see the synopsis that says, here's the pattern. You type in the Java C command, and then you give the options. And because it's in square brackets, it's optional. Um, then you have the source files, which I guess it means um, one or more here is what it specifies. Um, this is just the arguments defined here, and then you have arg files here, which is one or more files if um, if the options ask for it. So at the minimum, at the minimum, what you could do is Java C and then your source file. If you want to browse through, I currently have Vim as my default uh, terminal text editor. So if I press space, spacebar, um, where the semicolon is here, it'll allow me to navigate. If I type in control B, that'll allow me to go um, backwards. And let me see if I can add in the keywords here.
right, so um, the B stands for backwards and F stands for forwards. Pretty simple. Um, so you can navigate forwards, backwards, and then if you want to jump to the very end, it's shift G for uppercase G, and then two lowercase G's for at the very top of the file. So instead of scrolling forever, you know, like the infinite scroll kind of feeling, you can quickly navigate uh, to the various um, lines of the file. Now, if you want to jump forward to, I don't know, line 100, you could just type in the number where it has the colon and it'll take you directly to where that is. Okay, so we didn't read this manual carefully, but let's, you know, hypothetically go through an example where we can run a Java file. Uh, so let me quit, quit, uh, quit this. So that would be Q for quit. Um, that takes me right back to where I was. And then now I'm going to open up a, um, I'm going to navigate to a folder that has a Java file and then I will run code from there. All right, so I found a subdirectory on my computer that has the Java code example that I can use for demonstration here. What I've got in here right now, if I use ls list, and then um, I'm gonna use those two flags, and I think um, before I enter that in, let me just show you the manual for ls. So we scroll forward, um, we can have this one that I'm about to use, which is include everything that starts with dot, because this will include everything, even the visible files. And then if I scroll forward to lowercase l, and that would list in long format. So it lists everything in one column. Um, well, by one column, I mean the file names are in one column. Um, so I find it slightly more readable for myself, but you know, if you want to use ls without any commands at all, it would do that. And because I prefer just looking down one column, that is what I would see. And I could also, uh, because I don't have any invisible files uh, to show here, you can see the difference between with and without the a for listing the dot um, invisible stuff. Um, you can either see the directory going to the parent or I guess dot is current directory. All right. So right now what I have are two class files, two Java files and a make file. Um, I'm going to remove the class file. So now this is very much like regular expression where you have the star, the star means anything. So what this is going to do is remove all the files that end with dot class. All right, so we could see that um, as proof. Um, what I have here, and I'm going to use cat to show the contents at um, you know the file, and I forget what cat stands for. I think it might be a um, acronym. And uh, maybe the way to find out is, okay, so concatenate and print files. So I guess the cat comes from something in that word. Who knows? Um, it, this was created way back in the 60s and 70s. And you know, like back then they, they uh, um, you know, had, had lots of uh, ideas um, about how to do things. All right, so let's look at the file content. So we have cat. And then let's say I'm curious what is in ju uh, sorry, I'm interested in the contents of foo.java. So cat foo.java, that'll let me um, uh, view the contents there. So we have, if you remember Java, you have subclass and superclass. And if you extend a, another class, then you have um, the subclass as the one that extends and then the one that's extended is this superclass. So now if I use less instead of cat to view uh, the other file, you can also see the contents, but this allows you to navigate. So if you had a much longer, um, you know, thousands of lines of uh, uh, code, then you could, um, you know, 
get more use out of it. So this doesn't print it to the console in the terminal. This just allows you to look at the file and navigate using them shortcut keys. All right, so we have, um, just to make it easy to see the two of these on screen, let's have the, the two displayed out here. So one prints foo and printing from subclass, and then the other is uh, hello worlds and printing from superclass. Okay, now I prepared this um, uh, back last fall, um, so a year ago, and as you can see from the timestamp, October 20th, 2019 is the last time I either created or updated. So I don't remember now what I have um, in terms of like what I was trying to accomplish. But I did have a file, one more file in here that helps me remember what I was trying to do. Okay, so this is where the beauty of make and similar programs come in. Um, so now let me show you the contents of makefile, which it has a little bit more stuff. So if I now use less and makefile, then you'll see there's a lot of um, uh, lines of stuff. So the hashtag symbol here stands for comments. And um, I think what I'm gonna do at this point is switch over to the other terminal application that I like to use, which is called iTerm. And I'm going to open the same thing up uh, over there. And I think with the syntax highlighting, you can then see, um, you know, a little bit more readability. Uh, you don't have to use iTerm to get the syntax um, editing capability. You can probably set up your um, um, terminal app to do the same thing. Uh, myself is, I just, like, when I set up this Macintosh computer, I just immediately went to iTerm, downloaded that, installed it, and didn't touch Terminal since then. So, um, that's why this one's not very much, um, configuration. So I'm going to do the same thing, uh, with opening the Terminal, but now I'm going to open iTerm, which is space... Oh, sorry, command space to open the spotlight search and then iTerm, which will create this. Um, again, you could use command and then the plus icon to open the font. iTerm is great because you get a lot more configuration options. So if I open the preferences, you can see that, um, you know, all these things can be uh, used and then I have various settings um, that I can uh, open different profiles and then have different uh, color schemes if I wanted to, different uh, directories to drop in, um, all that. Anyway, iTerm is known as being like just way more configurable. That's why I like it. Uh, you definitely don't have to use that to complete any of the assignments in this um, semester. It might be helpful, it might not be. But going back to the example that I wanted to show, um, so I was in the Java example folder and I had these um, files. So what I wanted to show was how if I were to use less here, um, okay, so that didn't work. But if I use, um, okay, so yeah, that did change. And now I'm curious if the other one would have worked. Ah, so... Um, let me quit here and quit here and then I could open it. Okay. So, all right. It, it does work. Uh, my Vim settings had syntax highlighting and it looks like it did work. So we could have, yeah, we could have stuck with that. Um, okay. So let's go back. Um, I have a typo here. So if I want to edit this, I'm going to use the X key to delete character at where the cursor is. I'm going to press escape and then colon and then W to write in order to save. So the written means I just save the file. So I'm just using them shortcut keys. 
I have a great preference for Emacs. So what I could do, and I don't know if my settings are gonna work great here, but um, I have Emacs installed, so I'm gonna use the NW flag just to keep within the terminal instead of opening up a GUI. And I'm gonna try editing the file in there and I'm gonna see what happens. Okay, so I've got Doom Emacs installed, which is like this other pack, power pack um, of, of customization stuff for Emacs specifically, but it looks like it also does syntax highlighting for me when it comes to a uh, make file. Uh, and you could see here Emacs has identified it to be a certain kind of file and provided a certain um, like view, editing view for me. All right, so we have here, um, what I was trying to show was how I'm gonna look at this file to get a sense of what I wanted to accomplish with the two different Java files. Okay, I have a lot of comments here and you know we're just gonna skim over it because um, that's not really important at this point. What I'm gonna do right now is jump to line 12. So remember it's colon and then you can jump to the number. And so here I just jumped to the line, JC is an alias for Java C. Okay, and then JVM stands for Java. So we're just gonna have these two variables set in the uh, make file, and then we're gonna be reusing that. So now if I use the J key, I could navigate one row at a time, but remember uh, time is of essence, so control F allows me to jump much further down the line. Okay, so now I'm looking through, I see here classes equal, and um, it is an equal sign, so I know that this means I've assigned something to it. What was it? I now have a comment to remind myself it's a macro, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, so not very important, so I'm gonna keep moving forward. Um, keep moving forward. And now I see I have the default is classes uh, line 65. I've got a prefix thing, or I forget what mate calls it, a prerequisite, sorry, a prerequisite classes, and then it has to run classes before it runs JVM main. And remember JVM stands for Java main, right? So Java main means run the main, um, run the main class. So the main class had the main method, right? Okay. Now we also have here classes defined at line 77. So we have classes equals everything uh, dot Java and then it'll transfer into classes. So um, we're gonna keep reading. We've got run, which will create the class um, version of the files before running um, the stuff and clean will clean the extra stuff. So instead of remove dot class um, star dot class, I could have run uh, make clean. Um, hopefully that gives some idea of how you could read a make file, um, even one that you wrote like a year ago. Some of these comments maybe like are a little uh, in need of edits because I don't quite remember exactly. Uh, why I wrote it in the style, but anyway, um, that means if we quit, quit here, if I type make, um, it'll just run the default one. And so what it does, and it shows you here, it does a Java C, compiles Java, and um, you give it the file name, and then it runs uh, the main file, which says, hello, hello world. So that's an example of how you can use makefile. But what we really want to be able to do is connect to the, um, uh, the web labs server. In order to access the web lab Linux servers, um, you need to have somehow the 
IP address to connect to, and then you need your username and your password. So I assume you have the information somewhere. Um, and this is what I got when I went into the web lab, like maybe a couple years ago. And then I scanned this to keep a digital copy because it's easier for me to do a keyword search on my computer than to rifle through my filing cabinet. Um, okay, so I forget exactly which of these I should be looking at, but you know, when you look through the information, look for the one that says public, um, public IP because you're accessing from off campus. Uh, some time ago, what I did was copy in the login information for myself into uh, my SSH config file, which when you say SSH config, it means your home directory .ssh directory and then a file named config without any file extensions. This is just a typical way um, to configure various nicknames that you want to give to your, I don't know, server stuff, okay? So I have the host name here, which is the soul35 um, IP address, which, you know, mimics that. And I did this because it'll be easier for me to reference in the future. You definitely don't have to do it this way. The Hashtag symbol again is for comments. This is a very like common commenting um, symbol to have. And what I have here is my username saved, so I don't have to keep typing that in, and my host name, which I'm going to copy really quickly just for demonstration. Um, and then and then we're going to like proceed forward. Okay, so let me quit that. So what I can do and I can type clear to clear the screen, make it a little easier to read. Um, I keep, <coughs> excuse me, I keep mentioning you have the user at host pattern. If I type control C, you'll see it on the screen, but it doesn't run. I just exit out of that and get a new command prompt um, asking for my input. So instead of user at host, I fill it in with the things that I need. So my username is kchuang and I have the host, which I could use the uh, letter version, but programmers can be lazy. And um, okay, so that didn't quite work as I intended. Um, so let me try that again, type it out. Uh, so what I have here is my username and then my host and the host would be uh, 146 um, there we go uh, 245 252 and 35 okay so that that is the IP address to get into the server if I type enter from there, it doesn't ask me for the password because I've set up a way where it knows who I am and the machine that I'm logging in from. The first time you log in, you're going to be asked to give your password. Um, but for now, it's just an example of logging into the server. So let's see if it works. Huh. Okay. So it looks like you are going to be waiting for a while. Um, so let me quickly explain why my terminal looks that way. Um, by default, if you've never done anything, actually, let me control C to quit the SSH command. We'll revisit in a little bit. So let me just go back to like, if we look at bash, I think if, um, you never edited your, um, terminal ever. I think it'll just look very plain like this. Um, so for instance, like that, uh, um, and so on. Um, and that's normal. Like the black and white look classic. And you'll probably see dollar sign uh, or some other symbol. What I have installed here is uh, a plugin sort of customization pack for the ZSH shell, which is just the Z 
version of the shell. Bash tends to be the most like common basic shell that's available. So at some point I had set everything to be ZSH and I have installed um, something called Oh My ZSH plugin. Um, and to quickly uh, find out information about it. Okay, yeah, so Oh My ZSH. And this is, oh, so they've changed it since I've updated it. Um, Okay, so I was trying to find where it's located on my directory. Ah, but if you go to this URL in your browser, it will open up the, whoops, wrong key. If you go to that, um, you know, website in your browser, It will be something where um, you can get the installation instructions and some understanding of what it is. And this is why I encourage students to write a readme file or some sort of way to describe your project because if you ever want to share your work, you want your reader to know what you're working on how it works, things like that. So now you are looking at somebody else's public code and you, you can get a sense of like what it feels like to read what somebody else has prepared. So there, there's a lot of installation instructions here and then um, there's no standard format. So you kind of just have to read through the whole thing and uh, decide what works for you. So what I had done was copy one of these versions of um, installation, any one of them should work. And then from there, I opened up the configuration file for ZSH. And your tilde means your home directory, which on your Mac would be users, sorry, slash users slash, and then user your username. Um, in the configuration file, you can have a bunch of settings and a lot of it comes uh, for, you know, you out of the box, so to speak, when you install oh my ZSH. But their wiki, uh, well, I guess they've changed since I looked at this. So <clears throat> if you look at their wiki, you can see there's a bunch of plugins, themes, and various other information. So for instance, what they have with Git is various shortcut keys so instead of, for instance, um, I don't know, git status is something that I check very often. So instead of git status, they have uh, shortened, shortened it to GST. If I want to check the remote, um, let's see. Okay, so I type this in quite often. So now I can remember for myself, instead of typing git remote v to see what the source is for this. Um, so this was from fall 2019. So grv was the shortcut. So that does the same thing. Um, let's see what happens. And I'm just exploring here. And I'm trying to see if there is a way to access the variable or alias itself. Um, um, yeah, I, I don't know off the top of my head. So that's not important. Don't worry about it. But um, this is why I'm able to get this different prompt. And for the exact look of it, if we go back to the plugins, the wiki, and the themes, so now you can see there's a bunch of different themes and my th 
theme was Robbie Russell. So if I want to change it to, let's look for one that's very recognizable. Uh, maybe Burrow, Bureau. Uh, so, okay, so here, here's what I'm going to do, because I am not sure I want to commit to this. I want to use a comment uh, to comment out what I had before so that I don't lose what that was, because I'm not using version control on this. Um, so now I use W to save, but before I press enter, I don't want to do the colon Q to quit. So I'm just going to do all in one stroke, save, quit, reset to see what happens. Um, I forget that's not the way to uh, apply the changes from your setting. So source might be the correct way. Okay, so now we have that N of I type reset. Now everything or clear might like, you know, bring you up to the top of your terminal. So now it shows you the full directory path of where you are and the slightly different look with, you know, different style. So that's why I'm able to get the different look than your regular terminal, um, you know, straight out of the box. And if I were to type LL now, because LL is an alias for LS-L, we can now see, you know, okay, so that doesn't color that. Some of the, some of the themes do create different colors. Um, so it all depends on the author of that particular theme, what they thought would be nice to have. If I go up a directory and list, okay, so now you can see a directory has a different um, color than your regular text files. Um, let's see what else. Okay, so I think that covers quite a bit um, in terms of, okay, so one more thing, just to like make sure the make file made sense. So if we go back to the Java example um, and look at the main.java. Okay, so we could probably compile the main full uh, main class, right? So that would be Java C main.java. And the thing with the make file is that it's a recipe. So if you know a year from now I don't remember what I'm doing, I could have comments, I could have the command itself that I'm trying to run from uh, or trying to run um, in the command line and be able to repeat what I need to do. Okay, so this doesn't work because I'm not supposed to run a .java source code file. I'm supposed to run the compiled version. And that does that. Now let's say I want to edit main.java and I want to print out something else. Okay, if I run main.java, I did not compile it, so it does not know of the changes. But if I want to update it or update the compiled version, then I would use Java C. And because I am a lazy programmer, I'm going to try to do this all in one line instead of two different lines because I could then type one less thing. And it's just, you know, nice to have that all together. So now it compiled and uh, ran the file for me all in one stroke. And um, so that's one of the reasons why I really prefer the terminal interface. Um, it's not required to get by, you know, now in 2020, but you could definitely see a lot of advantages and um, be way more efficient with your time if you know how to use it. So it does take, you know, a little time to learn, but I think it is a good trade-off of your time. You know, it it brings about a lot of efficiencies as you learn more and more about it. So definitely take the time just to learn a few different things. If you can navigate file directories, uh, you know, for instance, if I want to make 
a directory like that, I can move everything from here, that's a .java um, file, into the src folder, right? And so now I have that, and I could run make clean, right? So you see how that is pretty easy to navigate, and if I want to say, nope, I want to undo that. I don't know off the top of my head what the undo thing is, but what you could do is move everything from within the source folder to here. And so now you have that and you could remove directory src because it's empty. If it's not empty, then you have to use remove uh, recursively and then probably force to remove a directory with files. Um, so those are just a few commands, you know, hopefully it, it helps you see, uh, you know, how to navigate through all of this. And anytime you get lost, just man, and then the manual page for the command that you want. And if you want to quit, it is letter Q.